Hey guys and gals, welcome back to another episode with No Name Trapper. Today's video is about dispatching animals. All right, and when dispatching animals, I believe there are three key factors to keep in mind. The anatomy of the animal, the way the organs and everything lay out with inside the body. Okay, two, the angle of the shot. So, you know, wherever you are and the angle that you're taking that shot on that animal. And then third, accuracy. Take your time, be accurate. So we're going to go over um, and cover a variety of animals that I trap and that I've dispatched for years. And we want, the key thing is to be humane in fur bearing trapping with uh, the least damage uh, to the fur pelt as possible. We're going for humane first and then the least damage to the fur. Alright guys, so the first animals we're going to talk about are mink and muskrat. For me, that's an easy dispatch because if it's not drowned from the set itself when I get there, I'm not going to put a bullet hole in such a small animal. So what I do then is I use a, uh, a heavy duty stick, um, a good thick, you know, stick, and I will in one hit, uh, you aim for back behind the head where the skull attaches, um, and you hit back there at a side angle and you sever the spine from the skull in one hit. It's very humane, it's quick, uh, they don't feel a thing, it just happens and it's done. Um, it causes no damage to the fur, so that's how I dispatch muskrat and mink. Alright guys, and the next animals we're going to talk about are raccoon, possum, beaver, and otter. Now keep in mind with these dispatches I'm talking about, we are not dispatching them to use for the skull market. If I was going to do that, it'd be a different method of dispatch than we're using. Okay, so raccoon, possum, beaver, and otter. Okay, and it's because of how they uh, how the layout of the animal is and the skull is. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Now the first thing is what type of weapon do I use? Well, I use a 22 caliber pistol. Um, I always keep one on my hip at trapping season anyways. You can use a 22 caliber rifle. You can use uh, pellet rifles. A lot of guys are using those nowadays, either the seven, uh, 17 cal or the 22 cal. Okay, the key thing is, I hear with those, is it needs to be a, above a thousand feet per second. Um, I would not recommend a 22 Magnum. I've used it. The key is, you do not want to cause damage to this fur. The bigger the caliber you go, the more, uh, the bigger the hole entry, except 22 Magnum, I'm well aware it's the same size hole, but it needs a place to exit. You are putting a bigger round through that animal. Okay, so I believe your pellet rifles are good, your 22 pistols, your 22 rifle, I, I think anything bigger than that's excessive. No matter what size of the animal, that I'm at least trapping here in Iowa. I don't trap mountain lions. Uh, we've got a few that are starting to move in, uh, but I'm talking like coyotes, bobcats, red fox, beaver, otter, raccoon, possum, skunk. That's what we're talking about today. Okay, so those caliber weapons, those seem to work great, um, and they're not too much for the animal. It, it, it dispatches it quickly, but you're not causing damage. You're not forcing an exit hole. Um, and usually you get less blood with those calibers. Okay, so that's, that's all very important. Alright guys, so here's a picture of a raccoon. And, and this is how I, um, this is an example of how I would dispatch a raccoon, a possum, a beaver, or an otter. Okay, you see here we have two different angles on these raccoons. Okay, first off, a lot of guys say you aim right between the eyes. That's their nasal cavity. If you shoot a raccoon right between the eyes, that's the top right there of their nasal cavity. Okay, and if you shoot these a raccoon straight on like this, like this one here, there's going to be an exit hole uh, almost every time somewhere on the back. That I've even seen him go through the belly. Okay, so first off, 
I don't aim between the eyes. I aim above, about an inch above. Okay, but secondly, I'm not taking this shot. This shot right here, that's not happening. Okay, this shot, this is what I want, except I want to be high over that raccoon. When I shoot this raccoon, which is the angle I'd want, mind you, forget if there's a concrete slab, I'd be a little careful, but you, you want a downward angle, so that bullet's going to go right into the brain, right up there okay but you got to be above that raccoon that's the key thing you don't want to shoot it like direct on you want to stand over it get a good downward angle um, and in one shot that raccoon immediately is going to start doing and this is very important to know it's called a I call it a nerve flop okay their nerves st still working but that animal is deceased I, I know it's deceased because I've tested this for years. That nerve flop should not scare you. The first thing I do is I either put a boot on that deceased animal so it doesn't splatter blood everywhere. Or I'll grab it, take it out of the trap, and toss it off the side. But that animal is deceased. It no longer exists. It's not alive. You can touch its eyeball and it won't blink. I don't suggest you do that just in case, you know, but... That downward angle, an inch above the eyes, right there, that's the shot I'm taking on my raccoon, that's the shot I'm taking on my possum, that's the shot I'm taking on beaver, and that's my shot I'm taking on otter. Okay, and it is very lethal, very quick, this animal, none of those animals suffer, and it's a done deal. Almost no fur damage, because there's no exit hole. Okay. There's no exit hole because I'm aiming at an angle back in, but above. If you were to shoot straight down, you'd probably put a hole through underneath the jaw. Alright guys, now we've covered muskrat, mink, raccoon, possum, beaver, and otter. Now we're going to move on. And what we're going to be covering now is skunk. We're going to be covering um, fox and coyotes. I'll cover bobcat real quick though. I do not shoot my bobcat. I put a catch bull on them. They have one artery that runs through their neck. You put a catch bull on them and as soon as you pinch that, they die instantly. You are not suffocating them, okay? You are simply pinching that artery and they, they are deceased at that point. I move them off the side and I remake my set. Okay, it's very important though, you make sure you got that artery pinched. You want to provide a humane dispatch. You don't want to get too far up on the head with the catch pole and get around their jaw or something like that. You want to make sure you're around the neck and you give a solid tug and as soon as it pinches, you'll see your cat goes, I mean, he just goes limp. He's done. No suffering involved in that. So now we're going to move on to the, like I said, to the uh, skunk, red fox, and coyote. Alright guys, now we're looking at the anatomy of a coyote. Now this is important because this is how I take my, this is how I dispatch my uh, skunks and my red fox as well. Now the important thing, a very important thing I believe to remember here is I want this both front legs, I want the front leg towards me out of the way. I want that front leg up towards where this other one is at. That way I'm not going to hit the shoulder or risk hitting a chunk of bone and missing my shot. This shot is the same on me for skunks, fox, and coyote. Okay, so if you imagine this leg up here a little bit, where I'm going is not here, but right about, it'll be right there. Right there, it's a lung shot. Now imagine the front leg forward though, that's a key thing because my shot usually placed right about here, okay? And I shoot it in the lung, and that coyote drops. It's so instantaneous, it's unbelievable. Um, and the red fox or the coyote is done. Um, almost no blood. Quick, humane, no suffering for that animal. And then on top of that I do the same shot on a skunk now it's very important to remember for some reason a skunk takes a hint longer 
even with a well-placed shot. And you want to get a good angle on this shot, guys. Remember, you don't want to be, you know, standing up at the top of the hill shooting down or uh, underneath it, you know, uh, at the bottom of a ditch shooting up. A couple reasons. That's bad practice, you know, sending a round up over the road or something. Uh, but secondly, you want just a straight-on shot right into the lung. That's done. Coyote's done. Red Fox is done. It's humane. Not a lot of blood. And then, like I said with skunk, it's the exact same shot. It just takes longer. Um, they will act a little funky at first, kind of wander around, and they'll lay down, and then they'll just it'll they'll act like they fall asleep. Now it's very important that you make a good shot on a skunk. Now on a skunk it's very important not only that you make a good shot but it's very important that you got the angle right because they have a, a skinnier slimmer body so you need to aim for that where that lung is you need to make sure that he's well placed side to side in front of you you know head facing this way tail out this way you want him well placed make sure you're not laying down or balled up too much so on and so forth but you're going for a lung shot and you don't want a lot of echo now I use a 22 usually but I do believe a air rifle it would be a better option for skunk just because it's quieter what spooks them is the noise okay so less echo less noise um, one good shot and then once they lay down and just seem to expire just a slow approach to make sure that you've taken care of that animal uh, you get up there, no blood, usually the bullet doesn't seem to go through. I tend to run a lot of hollow points, um, not saying that's the route to go, but that's what I prefer. But anyways, that is how I dispatch a skunk, coyote, and a red fox. Alright guys, well that's going to finish this video up. Remember, we're going for humane dispatch and we don't want a lot of blood um, or fur damage. So take your time, make a well placed shot. Um, and let's make sure we do a good job for these animals, okay? Um, I think that's it. If you guys have any questions, uh, you know, to follow up with, get a hold of me. I appreciate you guys. Tight chains out there. Got an outdoor Got some critters and